Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Wednesday, the 12th of June 2024. In today's Mill News, breaking as of this evening, we have this from this is from football italia.net. As you can see, Palmer in talks for ex Tottenham defender Tanganga, that's Palmer. Uh, in uh, Italia, in Italy. Uh, having been previously linked with Milan, Inter and Atalanta, Tottenham defender Jafet Tanganga is reported in talks with newly promoted Serie A side Parma. The 25-year-old centre-back has been suggested as a reinforcement for several Italian clubs over the past couple of seasons, only to be put off by the demands made by Spurs. Now he will be a free agent as his contract with Tottenham is set to expire on June 30th. According to Sky Sports Italia, Tanganga's representatives had a meeting with the directors of Palmer, but he is not considered a priority for them. Um, also able to play at right back, the Tottenham Youth Academy product had loan spells with FC Augsburg and Millwall last season. He made 18 appearances in the English Championship, scoring two goals and struggled with a knee injury in August 2023 that kept him out for three months. Palmer were just promoted as winners of Serie B title and their coaches Fabio Peccia. So they're saying it's been reported by Sky Sport Italia, so they are the origin of the, this story. Um, and yeah, it's an uh, interesting one, interesting one. Um, it looks like, um, I would say... Now here's the thing. Uh, obviously, he came through Tottenham as a youth, he, he, even though he's older, over the age of 25 now. And I think they didn't offer him a contract. Uh, or maybe they did, I don't know. And he rejected it, but they had an option to extend. So, it, is it the case that any club in England that wants to sign him would have to pay compensation via a tribunal decision? And that is that what the... Um, the kind of uh, meal had agreed a fee with Tottenham was that fee basically okay if he comes to us we'll pay you this fee don't go to a tribunal we, we got you sorted um, because the reason why you go to you go abroad you go to a an, an football country that isn't from where you were from England uh, which is we saw is that Lovelace is when they do that when they move out of the English system you the compensation that they pay is lower uh, they don't have to pay as much compensation uh, is that the case is that why we're seeing him being linked with all these foreign teams or is he literally just does he have a, a a fee in mind does he have a price in mind obviously i imagine he's getting a lot of money right now or he was on the contract that we, he was out of spurs so if he was to come to me all he would almost certainly have to take a pay cut so is he going around, um, uh, or his agents are going around, trying to get him uh, a similar contract that he can get that he was on in the Premier League, which is, uh, which is I don't know if he can do that, but obviously they're trying and uh, having no luck so far. So there you go, um, and obviously. It looks increasingly likely that he's not coming to Mill, that they have a figure in mind that they want to get to, and they're trying everything they can. And like, how how desperate is he to to keep getting the money that he's getting? Is he going to ruin his life by going to somewhere like Saudi Arabia, or Dubai, or somewhere like that, or China, or wherever he's going to go, just for the money? Um. But there you go. Um, Faustian Pact. How how badly do you want the money? And what are you prepared to do for it? So there you go. Anyway. Um, moving on to this. So. This popped up today. This is from LondonNewsOnline.co.uk uh, It has been mentioned uh, previously. That someone mentioned it. It, it looks like we were we were going to be seeing the exit of Alex Mitchell 
And uh, we have an exclusive here from Richard Corley from uh, South London Press, uh, London News Online. Uh, Chan Athletic are looking to do a deal for the lad. So Chan Athletic are closing in on a permanent deal for Mill centre back Alex Mitchell. The 22 year old defender has been a hit at all of his loan clubs and was a mainstay of the Lincoln City side that narrowly missed out on the League One playoffs last season. Uh, Alex manager. Uh, Nathan Jones wants to add another centre-back to his options after releasing Michael Ekta and Terrell Thomas to compete for the starting spot with Macaulay Gillespie, uh, Romani uh, Edwards-Green and Lloyd Jones. Uh, the powerful Mitchell featured 41 times in all competitions for the Imps. He also impressed at Leighton Orient in the campaign before that, clocking up 30 appearances. Mitchell has also gained first-team experience at St Johnston and Bromley. Uh, he has another 12 months remaining on his... Uh, Den Dill. Uh, Mitchell told our paper in March he was determined to continue to play senior football. He said, oh, I've played 104 games now and I've kind of had a bit of a career for myself outside of Millwall. I know that I'm on Millwall's books. If it works out there, then it does. And if it doesn't, then it doesn't. I'm not really stressed about that. Uh, Mill have given me the opportunity to do what I've done so far. When you grow up in the academy system, you kind of live in a bit of a bubble. You don't realise how privileged you are to play football. Uh, for some reason, when I came here, um, maybe been reminded of that. I enjoy going into training and being around Lincoln. It's a r real privilege to do what I do. Uh, Millwall already have a number of defensive options, and I hope also hoping to strike a deal with Jafet Tanganga, who was recently released by Spurs. As we previously mentioned, that looks increasingly unlikely. So. Alex Mitchell being shown the door, does he want to leave because he's not there looking at Well, you can come in and you can sit on the bench. He's like, well, like, am I not even going to get, get a chance to play? Like, he's he's literally, he has proven himself step by step by step. He went out on loan in the National League. He went out on loan in League 2. He went out on loan in Scotland Premier Division. He went out on loan in League 1. And he's been very very good at every level that he's done and then the next step is to play in a championship and then Mill was like mm, yeah nah well what else can you do I mean what else can you do it's not like he's he's playing for Mill under, under 21s under 23s and then the fans are saying I'll oh, throw him in throw him in throw him in he's been playing men's football for the past three years at every step and he's stepped up time after time after time proven himself now that final step then Mill will have to bring him in and play him in the first team and it's it's like yeah no no sorry like yeah um it's just crazy it's just crazy and it's even more crazy so he's 22 years old they're basically throwing him out the door saying yeah you know all of this all of your journey so far yeah no thanks and then we've now been linked, this is from HITC.com, with an 18 year old from Rochdale in the National League. Uh, what are we doing here? So this is uh, Premier League new boys Ipswich joined Crystal Palace and Southampton in the hunt for Welsh youth star. It's, this is one of those stories, it's a clickbait story. Um, they're basically, f they, they, they pick a name of a player who's a bit bit hot, bit buzzy, and then he's, they attach all these the names of all these clubs on onto it, so that it, it'll get all these fans of all these different clubs to have a look at it. Uh, so HITC understands a host of clubs are chasing Rochdale's highly rated central defender George Nevitt. The 18 year old Stopper has become a first team regular for Dow. Hang on a minute. Stopper. Stopper? Stopper is a colloquial term for goalkeeper, as in shot stopper. Now here's where the story falls down straight away. Do these people know what the fuck they're talking about when they're referring to a central defender as a stopper? Probably not. Probably not. Uh, let's have a look. Graham Bailey, who's that? Uh, no idea. Uh, after making his first team bow last year at 17, he's made over 30 appearances. So Rochdale, they used to be in the league, they're now in the National League. Uh, Nevitt's performance has also seen him receive international recognition and he's been capped by Wales at under 19 level. So you go, that's him there, look. 
Now he looks like a kid. He looks like a kid. No offence, he looks like a kid. Is he ready for championship football? Now that's a man. That's a big fucking guy there. And this is a, a, a weedy little kid. Centre back for the championship. Are we sure? Or, or, or here's the thing, it's even worse. Are we bringing him in to put him in our under-21 team? Then what's the point in that? Because we already have Kamal Grant and we have Chin Ockley who are already doing well. They've already been out on loan. Maybe they're going out on loan again. They will bring this guy in. But this guy's playing at the moment. So what's the point of bringing him in to come and sit in our under-21 20, uh, team? This literally makes no sense unless, of course, this is... Now, here's the thing. Why they mention this, we'll get onto it later. We'll read it now. So Premier League clubs keen on George Never. Uh, HIT sources understands his performances have caught the attention of a host of clubs since he's made his debut in 2023. Um, Palace and Southampton were strongly linked in January, but now HIT soon understands they have been joined in the chase by newly promoted Ipswich. Sources also indicate that Championship sides Blackburn, QPR and Mill have watched him. So here's the thing. That's the thing. Have watched him. So we scouted him. So this guy, he's young and he's good. Let's go and have a look at him. They had a look. And we do have we do have a scout for the north. So obviously he's doing his job. I think his name is Mark Sal. Um, I believe that's his name. I'm not sure. So obviously we do have a, a scout in the north of England. So he obviously he's doing his job. He's looking at the players. That's what he's got to do. And here's the thing, how it works. How they know. I believe this is how it works. Uh, Millwall will phone up Rochdale and say, can we get a couple of tickets or a ticket? Uh, we want to go and watch your game against Thingy. And I don't know if they have to tell them why they why they want to come to the game. Maybe it's, oh, we want to scout one of your players. We want to, um, uh, we want to scout one of the players that's playing. Uh, maybe, they, I don't know if they have to tell them that. I'm not that involved in the, in the football business. Um, so this is how they know that all of these teams have been to watch this guy. So maybe they do have to say, who like, who are you interested in today? Would you like more information? This is the price. Um, I don't know. Uh, Mill have watched him while sleep on Peterborough are also in the hunt for Never and are keeping close tabs on the teenager. Uh, so there you go. And then you've got the manager saying how good he is. <sighs> but again, like... Why would he come to me a wall when you've seen what's happened to Alex Mitchell? Alex Mitchell comes in, does well, goes out on loan, step by step by step, works his way up, and then well, bring in the first team. Yeah, yeah, nah. You can go now. Why would he come here? Just stay at Rochdale and play. Just stay at Rochdale and play. The only thing that makes sense is Mill will buy him and then loan him back to Rochdale and, and let him play there. But then what's the point in that? Uh, yeah, it's just bizarre, just utterly bizarre. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. Uh, now moving on to this. Oh, now here's the thing. I have been around the world. I've been looking high and low. I've been up under. I've been down under. And that's where we're going now. Down under. This is from ftbl.com.au. That's not Austria, that's Australia, mate. That's Australia, you flaming dingo. Yeah, here we go. Why am I bringing this up? Well, you'll find out. Uh, so they're, they're talking about West Western Sydney uh, Warriors, uh, Wanderers. Western Sid Sydney Wanderers. Um, I'm not going to read all of this because I don't really care. They're talking about... Um, they got to find a new manager, and then they talk about well, what the new, what's the new manager going to do? Well, so here we go. In the middle, uh, as you can see, whoever the new coach is will be given largesse to make at least five signings. With Bosnar confirming at least two of the current squad could be moving elsewhere in the coming weeks. Yeah, look, uh, we're in discussions with some overseas clubs and. Those transfers will most likely happen in the next 10 days or so, said Bosnar. Bosnar declined to reveal the players involved, though it's known that defender Gabriel Kluwer and midfielder Thomas Building are open to moving on, whilst young attacker 
Marcus Eunice, who came close to joining Millwall during the January transfer window, could be up for grabs. So there you go. Another name to spread around. Marcus Eunice, who's that? Who's that? He's a 18-year-old winger, left winger. Quick as lightning. Um, Australian, but I didn't know about this. So I think this was a thing that was going on behind the scenes. That didn't happen. And now these this guy's just leaked it out by putting it on the internet. Because I can't see it anywhere on the internet going back to January. It wasn't, wasn't mentioned at all. So I think it was a thing that was happening behind the scenes that didn't happen. Now why didn't it happen? Was it a work permit thing? Because uh, obviously they need work permits now. Uh, back in the day, Australians, a lot of Australians, they have dual citizenship. So you would have uh, probably what? Uh, Australian and Greek, Australian and Croatian, Australian and some other European, uh, or whatever, Cypriot. And they would be able to use that as an EU passport to then come to England and, and join in the, the football fun time. Is that a problem? Because how are we going to sign a 17-year-old? Because you have to sign, they get you a point system. How is he going to get enough points if he ha he's as far as I, can, as I can see, I don't know. I know last season what I've been looking at. He played ten times for Western Sydney Wanderers, and they were all off the bench. And he scored, I think, one goal. So he's literally, unless he has a British passport or dual citizenship or some way of getting that, how is he going to come to this country? I don't understand how that can be. How can he get a work permit? Maybe so. Here's the here's the thing. Maybe he's not he's not coming to me all now, but he's still leaving. Maybe he's going somewhere else. I don't know, but here you go. Um, just mentioning that, and there he is. There. Uh, uh, yeah, he's eighteen. He's been at the club since he's twelve. Um, progressing from the junior ranks to the A-Leagues team, Eunice trained with the senior squad during the FIFA World Cup break and went on to make his debut against Melbourne City in mid-January. So, that's interesting. So, he was linked with a move to Millwall in January, but that's, he made his debut for them in January. So, did he, how did we, did he come over here? Did he have to go back? That's, that flight takes like a whole day. Uh, the fast pace and exciting winger, which obviously we know we're looking at wingers, has frequented Australian national team squads and most recently was part of the under-18 squad where he played against Portugal and England. Yes, he did. There was a tournament in Portugal, in Lisbon. Um, and this is from aleagues.com.au. He scored. Uh, they lost 3-2, but he scored one of the goals. Uh, A-League's pair Max Caputo and Marcus Eunice both scored but Australia under 18s conceded a 19th minute goal to lose to England 3-2 at the FBF Sub-18 tournament in Lisbon so England were 2-0 up within 18 minutes that's not good uh, he scored just before half time uh, I think if you go to Twitter you might be able to see it but I haven't got it loaded here uh, Eunice beat England goalkeeper Jonathan McCauley to the ball, turned and composed himself before, before slotting home the level up. Uh, the young Lions had the final say, however, substitute Adrian Blake scored in the final minute of regulation. So there you go, Marcus Eunice. Now, obviously, the deal was supposed to be done in January, didn't happen. Are we going back in, or is it dead in the water? I don't know. I don't know, but this this popped up today, like I said. I'm searching here, there and everywhere. I found it and I brought it back and I put it on here to show you. So there you go. Now you've been shown. Uh, I'm going to also show you this. This is from millwallfc.co.uk. It's a picture from, uh, yeah, was it yesterday? Or was it Monday? I think it was Monday, you know. I've forgotten. I've forgotten. Um, yeah. Here we go. Uh, Mill, Zidome, and Maka Roman and SC battle at international level. I said, I told you about this yesterday. Oh, uh, yeah, it was yesterday, Tuesday afternoon. Uh, yeah, you actually got. We had, I showed you the picture after the game where they were. They, they posed for a picture, and we got a picture from in the match. They were uh, tete a tete, as it was. Uh, so, 
they faced off each other Tuesday afternoons the Republic of Ireland uh, under 21s but England's under 20s in Croatia uh, they defeated Sweden 2-1 on Friday but were held by the Emerald Isle following a late equaliser uh, SA who played the final 25 minutes against the Swedes came on the same amount of time against Ireland, whilst Amaku was brought on into the proceedings on 59 minutes as he replaced Mark um, Ho Amoni. Uh, Joe Hodge gave the Irish the lead before goals from Archie Brown and a Dane Scarlet penalty put England in front, but a rebound from a saved spot kick ensured a share of the spoils for three minutes from time. There you go, look at that picture. Beautiful picture. Um, and there's some other pictures as well. I think that was from the first game. Uh, a, A for it, A Domo, eh? What does A stand for? Not Apple, a Domu. Um, there's Mati Jasaki, I told you all about that. Played an absolute blinder uh, for Belgium. And there's another shot of SA on his own. And then uh, we're back to the, the original shot. Um, so yeah, there you go. Beautiful stuff there, beautiful stuff. Now moving on to this. Uh, this is from LondonNewsOnline.co.uk, the South London Press's online website. Uh, military vets get a chance to connect via Mills' heartwarming fireside program. Uh, a new community initiative provides veterans with the opportunity to connect during free weekly football sessions. In partnership with Military Veteran Football Club, Mill Community Trust has launched a new Mill, uh, military veteran football program for veterans to build relationships with her other former service members by meeting up to play five-a-side football matches at the Mill Community Trust Lions Centre on Saturdays. Um, we are very passionate about offering military veterans a safe space to come together in an environment where they will not be judged, said David Bygate Pitglio, chairman of the Military Veteran Football Club. There is a unique camaraderie that is often lost once you leave the armed forces and to be able to return to it as well as play football is truly invaluable. Uh, the new initiative was funded by a £10,000 grant from the Skybet EFL Building Foundations Fund which aims to support community programmes tackling loneliness and mental health while promoting involvement in sports. It began when Mill Community Trust Education and Employability Manager John Scarborough reached out to Mr Bygate Pitglio uh, Pity, uh, am I saying that wrong? Pity, Pity, Pitiglio, Pitiglio, is it I am Pitiglio? And pitched the idea of a partnership between their organisations after securing the funding needed to get the programme off the ground. Uh, Mr. Scarborough said, Oh, massive thank you to Military Veteran Football Club. Uh, without them, this football programme wouldn't be possible. And, and they were able to help us identify that there was another, no five aside football provision for veterans in London and the South East. Uh, in April, the Military Veteran Football Programme held its opening season, attended by more than 20 veterans. The day kicked off with a five-side football match and breakfast before the participants made their way to the Den Stadium to watch Mule host Cardiff City. Uh, the programme plans to work with Vex Forces charities and support agencies, as well as to provide education, employability and health and well-being support for its participants. Uh, Mr. Bygate Pidiglio said... Uh, listening, listening to John's obvious enthusiasm to, towards offering the veterans in London and the South East access to sessions that have been experienced by hundreds of others around the country made it a no-brainer for us to start a partnership with him and his team. Um, yeah, there you go. Cool. Uh, now, moving on to this, the last story of the day from southernnews.co.uk. It's a blast from the past. Oh, no, hang on. What's going on here? It's News at M Plus. When I looked on this this morning, it wasn't News at M Plus. Hmm. Did someone forget to put the plus on it? Uh, so yeah, I won't be bringing you this. I'm sorry, I swear. When I looked on it this morning, it wasn't News at M Plus. Because um, they're normally written by John Kelly, and this is by Kyra Evans. So I think maybe they probably uploaded it wrong this morning. Um, but yeah, it's a story about Matt Lawrence. So I'll just tell you if, if you want to. Uh, Mill uh, News at M Plus is a thing you can play 30 pence an article or you pay 90 pence a week, which equates to what 52 quid a year. Uh, I guess it's 50 quid a year, and you get access to uh, this premium content. So, there you go. And on that note, 
Thank you for watching and goodbye.